Welcome back everybody. I have another video for you guys and I, you know, I'm really trying to put together some cool topics that are going to support you designing and remodeling your own kitchen. And when it comes to kitchen remodeling, the planning stage is key for a successful remodel in the end. And there are several things that are kind of hard to figure out on your own. But once you go through the remodel, you're like, oh my God, I wish I would have known that. And I don't want that to happen to you guys. So today I really want to talk to you about kitchen island dimensions and some general island size guidelines that are going to help you go through this remodel and really enjoy what you've created in the end and not have any kind of regrets. Now, before we get started, my name is Kasten Cobb, kitchen designer and owner of King's Kitchen in Tacoma in the Pacific Northwest, your favorite cabinet supplier and kitchen remodeler. And uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, but also follow us on our social media handles. Um, we'll have everything listed for you guys below as well as our website. We have been adding some really cool stuff to our website, including products that we love and that we use on many projects. So I would love for you guys to check them out as well. First, let's talk about island walkways. Whenever you are introducing an island to your space, you have to make sure you have enough walkway so you can freely move around the kitchen. A lot of times one side of that island, a lot of times the back side of that island where you have seating is a major walkway to another room in the house. It could be from the living room to the dining room or you're coming in through the house, through the kitchen, walking into the rest of the home. So having significant and enough walkway space is really key to feeling comfortable in this kitchen into making it flow. Now, uh, American Building Size Guide, um, building code, short, is uh, you need a 36 inch clearance, but in reality, I hardly ever use a 36 inch walkway. It is not sufficient enough. Yes, per building code, it's fine, but really to nicely open appliances and have enough room to work around this, having enough room to opening up refrigerators and also um, dishwashers or even drawers, 36 inches is not sufficient. So I usually have a rule that if I have enough space in this uh, kitchen footprint, I'd love to go 42 inches from my walkway space. And if we have two butts in the kitchen cooking, I'd love to go 48 inches of walkway. Now, there is also a thing of too much space of for the walkways and i think anything over 48 inches like if you're starting to go 50 inches and over is starting to feel very roomy and open and i'm not that big of a fan next on the list is a question i get asked all the time and it is all about overhangs especially for seating right now when you know if we think a couple years back we in this industry we've mainly used granite you know and there's a lot of homes that you walk into now they have granite and we're starting to rip a lot of those kind of 90s granites out but in the granite world natural stone the maximum overhang is nine inches so when we start doing the, all these overhangs for seating areas and we had a lot of raised bars nine inches was kind of the minimum overhang. These days, a lot of people are working with quartz countertops. By the way, if you don't know about all the different countertop materials, I do have a video on that that I will link in the description below for you. Now, when we're using a quartz as a countertop, quartz is a man-made product and there is more stability in the product so you can easily go longer distance without any kind of overhang supports. And that's really the reason why a lot of people kind of extend it to more of a 12 inch overhang for seating. So yeah, nine inches is a minimum, but to be decently comfortable, I'd say, work for a 12 inch overhang on your island. And if you want to be really roomy and feel very comfortable, I sometimes also go for a 15 inch uh, overhangs on my islands. And then it all depends on the length of the island and if I'm adding more support, maybe on columns on the ends and really make that make the entire island look like a, a really nice big piece of furniture. But uh, 12 inches in, is kind of your minimum uh, to be comfortable and 15 inches is very generous, especially if you're tall and you have long legs. Next on the list is the question on how much space do I need per person of sitting on my island? 
And the standard rule of thumb for this one is about two feet. So if you have the ability, let's say, you know, if you're trying to do, uh, cut that out. Let's say if you want to seat, my goal is to seat four people on my island and I'm then I'm probably going to try to get like about an eight foot island and then I have plenty of room for everybody. Now, if the island is more used for the kiddos doing homework and hanging out and eating their breakfast there, you could get away with maybe like a 20 inch width per seat and that would still work out if it's not adults. But if you're really trying to sit adults here as a main like entertaining space, I would definitely try to go for the 24 inches to be nice and roomy for everybody. Next on the list is how big should my island really be? And this is a tough question because it always depends on the space. And islands are determined on the footprint in the kitchen, on the space that you have available because you have your outer um, walls and then you have your wherever you're sitting cabinets in that room and then you deduct your walkways and again you know 36 inches 39 is the minimum 42 is comfortable and whatever is left over can be the width of your island the length is usually the length of the kitchen space that you have available now sometimes people have a lot of space and then they just keep growing and growing and growing this island and there is a thing as a too like too big of an island right and i think the general rule of thumb now there's always an exception to this but i think the general rule of thumb is that your island should fit within one countertop slab and counter and that's really important and i sometimes work with you know other um you know with homeowners and then they have their own contractors and i'm not supplying the countertops i'm really i get hired to really specialize in the cabinet drawings and like supplying the cabinetry i still talk to them about the countertops because i don't want you to be stuck and now we're creating an island that is too big and you will end up with a seam in your island and i know 99 percent of people don't want a seam in their island so really look at the sizes that you can get your countertop in now, if you're using natural stone, natural stone usually comes in a little bit uh, smaller dimensions than man-made slabs like quartz or decton or things like that. But uh, for example, Cambria, great brand. I work with Cambria a lot and their jumbo sizes, their jumbo slab sizes are, I think it's like 65 inches width by 132, something like that, don't quote me. Uh, on the overall length. So if you can keep your island within that size, knowing that you still have to cut off maybe an inch everywhere, and then you still need overhang from the cabinets, okay? So that doesn't mean your cabinet layout is 132 inches. Your cabinet layout is probably minus two, minus two, 128 inches in width, okay? So if you can go by kind of that standard, I think you will be just fine creating the perfect size for your island. I'm kind of just adding on to that point. So if you end up with an island that is bigger, to get away from creating a seam in your island, you could also introduce a secondary countertop. And a lot of times when we run into this, we end up using maybe a really nice wood countertop just to offset the counters. And then what we do is we try to separate maybe the heights. So it's a distinct different and the distinct step between the two materials and everybody knows that it was very intentional. And I've done a video on these guys before. I love working with Grote House. They have um, amazing wood countertops that they even warranty. They're uh, manufactured over on the East Coast. And um, I can actually post that old review down below. It's super old, but I just recently did another project with one of their countertops. And we did the this exact thing. We had a quartz countertop island, and then we had an integrated section with wood countertop to really differentiate the two the two sections. So if you end up with an island over the whatever allowance is from your quartz counter, you can always work around this with integrating a secondary material. Next on the list is the question, how deep should your island be? And again, the depth, the max depth in general is also dictated again by that size of your countertop selection. So if a Cambria, uh, jumbo slab is 65 inches deep minus two inches so you're looking at 63 inches is max right but really when it comes to the depth of islands we don't really 
think in that way. We usually think about, we have the front cabinet section uh, of the island island front. Your standard cabinets are 24 inches deep. You usually have about 1.5 inches on the front end of overhang from the cabinet box. Now you have 25.5 inches, okay? Then you can you usually have an end panel, three quarters of an inch. Now you can either go straight to your overhang, let's say 12 inches. Now you'd be at 25.5 plus three quarter plus 12. Now your island would be, I calculated that wrong, plus three quarters plus 12, would be a little bit under 39 inches, so 38 and a quarter. Or for extra storage and more depth on the island, we sometimes add a row of 12 inch deep cabinets on the back side. And these cabinets, because they are sitting underneath an overhang, they just have full height doors. And depending on the cabinet line you use, you can either just um, work around and use wall cabinets. So wall cabinets have full height doors. They're 30 inches tall, so they're literally just missing the toe kick. And you guys know I love working with Belmont and and uh, with Belmont, our toe kick is four and a half inches. So then all you need to do is have your installer build up a toe kick platform on site or with Belmont, there's actually a dedicated cabinet that already comes like that. So it's meant to sit behind the island. But uh, yes, if you do this, you're adding another 12 inches to your island depth. Now you're looking at 50 inches and a quarter. And that's a really nice depth for an island. It feels roomy. You can spread out, you know, if you have Christmas, you can like really spread out and do those Christmas cookies. If you have people over, you can really put out like a huge buffet. I mean, 50 inches is nice, right? And then obviously you can go from there. You can still extend it, make that deeper, however you want. But usually if I want a deeper island, 50 inches is kind of what I'm shooting for. Next on the list, and I, it's funny because I like I get these comments sometimes like, oh my God, my room is like this dimension. Can I fit an island? And it's hard to say when you're not in the space, but like really following like the dimension guide, you know, one run is 24 inches and you have your walkway and then what do you have left, right? If you follow that, it will clearly tell you if you have room for an island or not. But if you don't have room for an island, you can still have integrated seating with a peninsula. And yes, I know everybody's like super bummed out when they don't have enough space for an island, but a peninsula can just be as nice, okay? And it's a great way of integrating seating in a kitchen that is just smaller, okay? So don't be discouraged if you can't introduce an island to your space, just introduce a really nice peninsula, and it really kind of gives you the same feel of having that island. You can have a workstation and face somebody seating there. That's the whole point of an island, okay? You, uh, with a peninsula, the cool thing is you don't have to worry about walkways on all four sides. You just need it, you know, basically in the front and on the side and in the back where the seating is, okay? So um, don't be bummed out. If you can't fit an island, you can still probably fit a peninsula. Okay, guys, that was it. I hope it helped you guys. I love when you post and kind of tell me about your project. If I've missed a question, uh, feel free to leave that in the comments below. I am always excited to hear from you. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. I am, uh, you know, my entire team has been putting a lot of work into this and we're just super happy when people give us feedback on how much it helped them um, and it's helping you guys with your remodel. So, Keep up the comments, I love to see them. And uh, if you think of any cool topics that I could talk about, make sure to leave them below too. We're always looking for new inspiration ourselves. And other than that, I think that's it. And I'll see you guys next week, bye.